Now let's move on to discuss the components of whole blood, including plasma, plasma proteins, and cells. Whole blood is composed of two main elements, plasma and the formed elements, leukocytes or white blood cells, platelets, and erythrocytes or red blood cells. Plasma makes up 55% of whole blood and the formed elements make up the remaining 45. An adult male has approximately 5 to 6 liters of whole blood in the cardiovascular system and females have between 4 and 5 liters. Changes in blood volume directly lead to changes in blood pressure. Excessive bleeding, for example, can lead to a decreased volume and in some cases, hypovolemic shock. The fluid part of whole blood is known as plasma. It's composed of 92% water. There are 1% of dissolved molecules such as amino acids, glucose, and lipids. Gases such as oxygen and carbon dioxide. The remaining 7% is made up of proteins. These proteins make the blood different from the surrounding interstitial fluid. There are three types of proteins, albumin, globulin, and fibrinogen, in plasma. Let's discuss each of the three groups of proteins in plasma, beginning with albumin. The three major classes of proteins dissolved in the plasma include albumin, globulins, and fibrinogen. The major plasma protein is albumin. It's a major transport protein and it carries steroid hormones as well as fatty acids in the blood. Albumin also contributes to the osmotic pressure of blood and this opposes the hydrostatic pressure at the capillaries during capillary exchange. The second major class of proteins in the plasma are the globulins. These represent 35% of the total plasma proteins. They're produced in the liver and for the immune system. Globulins are divided into alpha, beta, and gamma globulins or antibodies. These proteins also can transport ions and hormones as well as protect the body from foreign microorganisms as part of an immune reaction. The third major class of plasma protein is fibrinogen. Fibrinogen only represents approximately 4% of all the plasma proteins. It's the largest plasma protein and it's vital to blood clotting. There are three major phases of hemostasis. The first is a vascular spasm and this is in response to blood vessel injury. In the next stage, the platelet plug is formed. And in the last stage, thrombin catalyzes the changing of fibrinogen into a fibrin mesh. The following is a clinical note on blood transfusion. Blood transfusion is a procedure used to deliver blood and blood products to an individual with a decreased blood volume or a decreased clotting capacity. Whole blood can be obtained from donors and stored chilled for up to three weeks or for long-term storage it can be fractionated and frozen. Blood transfusions are used to treat patients with a large loss of blood during surgery, for example, from trauma, certain burn patients, and patients undergoing chemotherapy. Prior to receiving a blood transfusion, such as during a surgical procedure, cross-matching is performed to determine the individual's blood group compatibility. Whole blood, platelets, plasma, or blood products can be infused into recipients. A clinical note on blood products. Blood products are used as a complement to blood transfusion. There is not currently a whole blood substitute capable of oxygen transport that is suitable for human use. One of the most successful blood products is known as a plasma expander. And this can be used to temporarily expand the blood volume to support cardiovascular function. To be similar in osmolarity as whole blood, Large amounts of carbohydrates are used in place of the actual plasma proteins. As the plasma expander does not transport oxygen to the tissues, they are useful for increasing blood volume and pressure temporarily until whole blood can be infused into the patient. The blood formed elements. There are two major groups of formed elements or cells in whole blood. 
erythrocytes or red blood cells, and leukocytes or white blood cells. Within blood are non-cellular elements known as thrombocytes or platelets. These formed elements in whole blood are produced during hemopoiesis, which takes place in red bone marrow of long bones, in response to hormones such as erythropoietin. Erythrocytes or red blood cells Erythrocytes transport oxygen and carbon dioxide. They are biconcaved cells without a nucleus. They contain hemoglobin for the transport of oxygen. And their biconcave shape is maintained by spectrin, and this allows the cells to be flexible, to change shape, to twist and turn as needed, passing through the capillaries. The red blood cells make up the vast majority of all blood cells. There are approximately 1,000 red blood cells for each white blood cell. On average, one cubic millimeter of whole blood contains between 4.8 and 5.4 million the structure of red blood cells. A red blood cell can be seen in this electron micrograph along with a platelet and a white blood cell. The red blood cell has a large surface area for the size of cell and that's because of its biconcave shape. The thickness of a red blood cell is approximately 2.85 micrometers on the edges and approximately 0.8 micrometers in the center. There's a large number of membrane proteins and an extensive cytoskeleton in a red blood cell, and these allow it to be flexible and deformable. The approximate lifespan for a red blood cell is 120 days. Approximately 1% of circulating red blood cells are replaced each day. At the cell's age, the plasma membrane ruptures and the cell is destroyed or the reticuloendothelial system removes aging red blood cells out of the circulation. The key transport protein in a red blood cell is hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a metalloprotein made up of four globin polypeptide chains with four embedded oxygen binding heme molecules. The oxygen saturation of hemoglobin is dependent on pressure. The higher pressure, such as inside the lungs, increases oxygen loading onto hemoglobin, whereas in the tissue the lower pressure increases oxygen unloading and the delivery of that oxygen to the tissues. Both carbon dioxide and 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate or DPG bind with hemoglobin to cause the hemoglobin structure to change leading to the release of the oxygen. The process of cross-matching for a blood transfusion, for example, includes the identification of the ABO blood group. The presence of specific proteins in the plasma membrane of red blood cells, called antigens, determine an individual blood type. The types are type A, type B, type AB, and type O. The surface antigens that are particularly important are the ABDRH antigens. These blood groups are in the following percentages in the U.S. population. Type O represents 46%, type A, 40%, type B, 10%, and type AB, 4%. The antibodies in an individual plasma can lead to a cross-reaction if an incompatible blood type is transfused into that patient. During a cross-reaction, the red blood cells clump or agglutinate and may rupture or hemolyze. Let's look at this table to see the features of each blood type. Type A has a surface antigen A and anti-B antibodies. Type B, surface antigen is B, anti-A antibodies. Type AB, the surface antigens are A and B and there are neither anti-A or anti-B antibodies. Type O, neither A or B surface antigens, but anti-A and anti-B antibodies.